Hey guys, so today is Valentine's Day, the most materialistic, shallow, capitalistic holiday. <laughs> <laughs> but did it start that way? Simply googling Valentine's Day origins, I found an article titled The Dark Origins of Valentine's Day, and I was immediately intrigued. <laughs> of course, when I open it, immediately it says, no one knows the exact origins, so... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it starts by talking about how February 13th to 15th was a Roman pagan feast of, forgive me if I say this wrong, they don't care, they're Romans. How far is the future <laughs> is it? No one cares if I say this wrong. Uh, the feast of Lupercalia. A pagan ritual where men would sacrifice a goat and a dog um, and then slap women with the hides. Women would actually get in line to be slapped because they thought it would make them more fertile. They also had a sort of matchmaking lottery where men would pull women's names out of a jar and they'd be coupled up for the rest of the festival, often ending in a marriage. So, <laughs> how do you feel about that, Macy? I want to do that. The Romans also could have been responsible for the name as Emperor Claudius II executed two men named Valentine on February 14th of different years in the 3rd century. Their materdom? Is that how you say it? Mater. Like, mater. Is it materdom? Materdom. <laughs> is that a thing? Materdom. I feel like I've heard it from materdom. Materdom. Is that how it's said? Let's That's see. not nice. <laughs> Their deaths were celebrated on St. Valentine's Day. Later, Pope Gelasius, Galasius combined the Feast of Lupercalia of St. Valentine's Day trying to get rid of the pagan rituals, which honestly I don't blame him. <laughs> the Normans also celebrated, I think it's pronounced Galantine, Galantin, Galantine's Day. Do you mind not showing me a Snapchat? <laughs> I'm filming right now. <laughs> the Normans also celebrated Galantine's Day or Galantine's Day um, and it's said that maybe <laughs> they mixed Galantine and St. Valentine. Because the name sounded similar, it's not me, it's the article, I'm just the messenger, <laughs> don't kill me. It also gained popularity when Shakespeare and Chaucer wrote about it in their works. Eventually it traveled to the New World, and Hallmark started mass producing Valentine's cards in 1913. I went to the Hallmark website to confirm whether this was true or not. They actually started offering Valentine's Day cards in 1913, and mass producing them in 1916. They even had examples of old Valentine's Day cards. I'll show a few now. All my sources are linked in the description, so if you'd like to view more of these cards, it will be down there. Well, on their website, I found another possible origin of Valentine's Day, which was a Roman legend about a man named Valentinus who was imprisoned for his Christian beliefs and sentenced to death. While in jail, he restored the sight of the jailer's blind daughter. The night before his death, he wrote a farewell letter, signing it from your Valentine. His sentence was the next day, February 14th, 269 AD. They also briefly mentioned Juno, which was the pagan goddess of fertility and love, which could have possibly been the goddess they were celebrating at the Feast of Lubricalia. While hopping around to various websites to confirm all the stories that I had gathered, I ended up on history. The oldest known valentine was written by Charles, Duke of Orleans, to his wife who was imprisoned in the Tower of London. Can you stop? <laughs> American Valentine was published by Ezra Howland in 1849. I'll show a few of her Valentines here, but I'm unsure which of them or if any of them were her first ones. It's strange how a pagan ritual has transformed into modern day Valentine's Day. You walk into any store following Christmas or New Year's and there's at least three aisles decorated with bright red and pink and cheesy cards, old chocolates, and overpriced stuffed animals. Are you okay? Because I'm just being too real right now. <laughs> I'm going to read you a few stats I found. Take it with a grain of salt. Not sure how accurate these are, but let's go on the ride together, I guess. <laughs> it's estimated that 19 billion dollars are spent by Americans on Valentine's Day. 4.5 billion of those is on jewelry alone. That's a lot of money. <laughs> Nobody loves anyone that much. <laughs> yeah, no. It's to the point it's laughable. <laughs> Now, don't get me wrong, I love an excuse to eat chocolate and receive gifts and give gifts, but like, it's a lot. <laughs> like, take a step back and look at what an extreme Valentine's Day has become. So why did I just give you a history lesson on Valentine's Day to lead to here? A lot of people feel bad this time of year, lonely, can't find a date, can't find the right present. Don't point at yourself, <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> know that romantic relationships don't define you or your worth. 
with social media, TV, Valentine's, we have this really unrealistic idea of what love is. No fighting, surprise gifts, elaborate dates. I can say with confidence that every single couple that I've seen constantly post about each other has had more fights than I can count. Don't use media as a reference to what love is. Love is so many things, but one thing it's not is perfect. Take this strangely pressuring time of year to surround yourself with people that you love and that love you. Friends and significant others alike. Also, be your own Valentine. 2018 is the year of self-care. <laughs> Literally, I'm like a sentence away from finishing. Can you please hold off showing me your double chin until I'm done? If you guys like this video, let me know down below and also comment what you did this Valentine's Day. Have a good day. Bye.